Hi, I'm Larry Micronia. Welcome to this edition of Profiles and Wizards. We have a special guest today, Dr. Patel from Complete Orthopedics. So glad to have you on. A uh, lot of questions, a lot of things going on. But first, tell the audience a little bit about your background and being a doctor. Hey, Larry. First of all, first of all, thank you so much for having me in your show. And uh, I would like to say uh, something about me that I got my master degree in orthopedic from India and I've been practicing there for last 28 years. I have done so many trauma surgeries and some joint replacements and some general orthopedic treatments there. I recently I moved and I have joined the Complete Orthopedic uh, and I'm the strong pillar of uh, this Complete Orthopedics. We have a group of orthopedic surgeons in Complete Orthopedic and uh, we are providing all type of uh, uh, surgeries like uh, joint reconstructive surgeries sports surgeries, spine surgeries, general orthopedic surgeries. So we are dealing with all type of orthopedic surgeries. But you know that people are really scared of surgery and they always scared to go into the OR. So always they ask me about some other alternatives of surgeries and definitely it's quite obvious that everybody wants some other options than the surgery. So because of that, there are newer and newer techniques, newer and newer uh, uh, modalities of treatments available in orthopedic. And that is known as a regenerative medicine, uh, where there is uh, the treatment, there is a sorts of uh, uh, injections which uh, help in the healing of the tissues. So uh, uh, that regenerative treatments today, I'm gonna discuss about this all treatments, uh, particularly the most common regenerative treatments are platelet rich plasma this is known as a prp second one is a bone marrow concentration this is also known as a bmc and the stem cells injections so these three uh, like uh, regenerative treatments are available in orthopedic out of all three today i'm gonna discuss about the whole things about prp because it's very popular once the famous uh, sports person has taken this uh, treatment and get cure with this PRP injections. So nowadays people are knowing more about uh, PRP, but they have some superficial knowledge about PRP. So today I'm gonna give the very simple description of PRP. So I don't want to go into the pathophysiology, the numbers. Right. So that will this make- This is basically an introduction for people so who may not know. Yeah, so that's become easy for the, even the general people to select their uh, modalities of the treatment. So uh, uh, definitely PRP, uh, if you just want that, what is PRP? Okay, so the PRP by name is a platelet-rich plasma. So in the blood, there are two components. One is a cell component and another is a plasma. In the cell component, there are varieties of cells are there, like a red blood cells. They are used for the carrying oxygens Second is the white blood cells. They are important for fighting against the infection in our body. And the third one is a platelet. So the platelet is required for the clotting mechanism and for the healing of the tissues. And now a lot of people don't know, and again, this, you know, it's basically new, this PRP. Mm -hmm. But it started out, it was being used to help bald people mm -hmm. regenerate their hair. Mm -hmm. And what they found out is this is not just for hair, this can really, really yes. help. And we have people who have these uh, diseases mm -hmm. and these injuries. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and your staff over there have been working with this PRP and getting some really outrageous results with it. So if you can just expound a little bit more on that this, the PRP is the plasma that's taken from you. Mm -hmm. So this is basically your body helping your body, right? Yeah, so basically, Platelet, uh, as I told you, that platelet contain growth factors, so they usually help in the healing process of tissue. So, uh, as you told that uh, it is used for the hair regeneration. Th there are so many indications of PRP nowadays in the hair, in the skin. But if I would say for orthopedic, because I'm dealing with the orthopedic cases, so I have a better knowledge about all these conditions where I can give good result with PRP. So, if you say that's uh, like a meniscus injury, small amount of meniscus injury, partial tear of rotator cuff, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, plantar fasciitis, then first and Carpal second- Carpal tunnel. 
right. carpal tunnel, then the first and second uh, stage of uh, arthritis. So this type of cases in the early process of degeneration like arthritis, you can delay the process of arthritis with the help of PRP. Dr. Patel, how do people obtain PRP? Okay. So uh, this is a very simple procedure to obtain the PRP, to make a PRP, but it's very important uh, to uh, get the PRP in a right way. Because if you don't uh, get a proper concentration of platelet in your plasma, then definitely it's not gonna work. So usually we say, we can say that five to 10 times of concentration of platelet is required for the plasma, uh, for the uh, better effect of that PRP at the uh, injury site. If it is less than five times, or maybe two times or three times, it's just like a saline, you won't get that result. So uh, I would say that patient has to come into the office. It's an office procedure. You don't have to go for a hospital or you don't have to admit there. So there is no hospital stay? There is no hospital stay. Patient come by walk and can uh, go by walk. So uh, it total procedure time will take around 45 minutes to one hour to complete from beginning to the end. So usually uh, when patient come, we withdraw blood from the patient. So it's all uh, from the patient's own blood. There is no any chemical or we are adding no inside, uh, nothing inside uh, to the PRP injection. That is the good thing that the patient can get any reaction or some allergic reaction or anything like that. So because it's patient's said, own blood. As we had said before, it's the body it's healing the body. The body. Yes. So there's no drugs involved, it's your own body definitely, helping. Definitely, So right. we just try to help the body to uh, get the uh, healing process. So it is just to support the healing process with the help of PRP. So we withdraw the blood. It's usually about 40 ml to 50 ml of blood we have to withdraw. It's depend upon which part of the body you want to give that injection. If you want to give injection into the knee joint, uh, obviously you need a more uh, plasma, so you have to withdraw more blood. But if you want to give it at the like tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, in that case you need a less amount of blood. Right. So out of 40 uh, ml of blood, you will get around five to six ml of plasma, which is concentrated with a platelet. And uh, uh, that platelet is an inactive platelet. So after processing the things, they usually, technique will make it uh, activate. So the activate platelet usually release growth factor. Right. So that activated platelet, once we withdraw, uh, separate it from the blood, that plasma injection, usually we have to give to the patient's body part, which is injured. Sometimes we need the help of ultrasound guided to exactly locate the uh, lesion where it is damaged. Right. Sometimes we have to go for a priorly ultrasound to get figure it out where we have to give that injection. So after getting the knowledge where we have to give, we have to give that injection and we have to uh, ask the patient to take rest for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes patient can go to the uh, home with the help of some support initially for a couple of days and then he can start some activity. Now with these treatments too, now, there's some people who have um, like a lower platelet count, a higher platelet count. Yes. Does that have a lot to do with the PRP? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, the PRP, the quality of PRP injection is totally dependent upon the patient's platelet. So there are certain conditions where you cannot get proper platelet, like uh, the person who is taking uh, some anticoagulants for the heart disease or some uh, other cardiac problem. So in that type of case, the quality of platelet, uh, platelet and quantity of platelet is not sufficient to uh, get the concentration in the PRP, okay? Second thing is the patient who is taking anti-inflammatory medicine like uh, NSAID. So the patient who is taking NSAIDs, the quality, because the NSAID is a medicine which uh, prevent the inflammation. It's an non-steroidal anti-inflammatory yeah. anti uh, medicine. So, but we need more inflammation to get the healing. So the uh, purpose of uh, PRP injection is to get more inflammation. If you get more inflammation, then you will get the more healing process, okay? Right. So the medicine which prevent the inflammation, uh, it's not uh, advisable for the patients. So the person who is taking long-term anti-inflammatory medicine, we, we should not select that type of patient. Right. Third, the person who is taking immunosuppressive drugs. Right. for the like a organ transfer or for like a cancer treatment. So in that type of case that we cannot get good quality of platelet. 
So we should avoid that type of patients. So we usually say no to this type of patients. So the post protocol would be for people who are anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. people who are on uh, autoimmune, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, probably anything that's gonna affect your platelet count. Definitely. Now, if people are taking temporary drugs, mm -hmm. where like, oh, I take the leave when I have a headache once a week or twice a week, mm -hmm. they could probably stay off the medication for yes. like four or five days before the procedure and still have it done? So, yeah, we have make a protocol, like it's a pre-injection protocol and post-injection protocol. It's right. very much important. See, just to put an injection of PRP, and it's not like uh, a simple procedure like a cortisone, you just put an injection and you will be good with that. The pre-injection uh, pre protocol and post-injection protocol is too much important. We have a protocol before injection that patient has to stop anti-inflammatory medicine for two weeks. If patient is taking any right. NSAID, he has to stop that medicine. Patient has to stop anticoagulant drugs like aspirin uh, to prevent that uh, um, damage to your platelet. We advise patient to stop alcohol and tobacco at least two weeks before so we can get good quality of platelet. So the right. ultimate aim is the quality and quantity of good platelet in our plasma. Right. Okay. So once we get that uh, PRP and we just inject it, we ask the patient for at least three to four days to uh, like immobilize the part of the body. Right. Like if, if we have given that injection for the knee joint, we allow him to walk with some support. Right. Okay, because after injection, in the very next day, patient will feel a lot of pain because it's an inflammatory process. And right. always inflammation release some toxin materials and that will give you some pain. Right. So even if it is painful, you cannot able to take any anti-inflammatory medicine because it will stop the process of healing. So right. you won't get that result after PRP injection. So we advise the patients to use heat application at the site of injection it works in a two way. One, it increases the blood circulation and by this way it clears the toxins material and relieves the pain. Second thing, it will increase the cell to cell signals. It will increase the cell to cell signals and because of that there is uh, enhancement of the growth factor release from the platelet and that will help in the process of healing. So we advise heat application. For three uh, for two weeks, we usually advise patients to do some normal activity, like go to the job, do daily activity, right. do some aerobic, simple exercise in the gym, not heavy exercise, no weight lifting, and uh, no strenuous work we advise right. to them. But after two weeks, we start physical therapy of that body part. Like if you're a shoulder, then right. we start some shoulder muscle strengthening exercise. For knee, we start some quadriceps strengthening exercise. So th uh, this exercise will help to promote that healing process. And after three to four months, usually patients start seeing some pain relief after healing of that tissue. If the patient has a arthritis, then we can see that good result within one month after four weeks. But if there is a, some torn tissue like a rotator cuff, meniscus right. injury, tennis elbow, in that type of cases, we have to wait till it heals completely to completely uh, get rid of the pain. Right. So I wanted to ask you, with this PRP, which is better, cortisone or PRP? Yeah, that's really confusing for all people because uh, the different, both has a different mechanism of action. Cortisone is a steroid which suppresses the inflammation and PRP is a platelet which increases the inflammation. So both are working separately. Cortisone subsides the inflammation and that's why it reduces the pain very fast. Within a couple of days, you will get rid of all your pain and symptoms, swelling and everything and patients start doing all the activities. While in PRP, you will get more pain after injection, but it will end up with a, eventually end up with a healing process and it's a permanent uh, solution of your treatment, of your disease. While cortisone is a temporary solution of your pain, it is a symptomatic right. treatment. It's not a uh, curative treatment. Uh, uh, I would say that it is uh, delaying the process of healing by putting cortisone. But the person who is not able to uh, like uh, walk at all or has a lot of pain in that type of case, we prefer to go for a cortisone sort. And cortisone sort is covered by insurance while PRP is not covered by insurance. Now, Dr. Patel, what's the difference between stem cells and PRP? So both are uh, like a regenerative technique uh, which help in the uh, like healing of the tissues. 
but uh, i would say prp is like a, if you want to build a house you if you want to make your wall strong you need a good bounding or you need a more brick so prp is like a platelet which release growth hormones so which act as a bounding material and heal the tissue fast and the uh, stem cells is a mesenchymal cells which we have to get it from the bone marrow or from the adipose tissue but the quality of stem cells is not good from adipose tissue so we have to withdraw drawn it from a bone bone marrow and this mesenchymal cell is a primitive cells of any tissue so if you have to increase the number of cells you have to put that mesenchymal cells at the damaged side and that will increase the number of cells and uh, help in the healing so the result will be same in prp and the stem cell cells but the different is there you need to go for a, uh, for stem cells you have to go to the hospital you have to take some sedation or some anesthesia and you have to puncture your bone and you have to remove that uh, mesenchymal cells bone marrow from the uh, iliac crest and then you have to put it into the patient so it's a like you have and both are not covered by insurance but the price is totally uh, like drastically uh, different prp is less expensive while uh, stem cell is uh, cost you more than ten thousand dollar so if you can get same result with prp and mesen uh, like a stem cells you have to select prp which is less expensive and less cumbersome you just go into the office get the injection and go back to the home now would they have to go in for multiple treatments on some of these things now so like would the tennis elbow be multiple treatment compared to some of the other ones or can it be like some or just one shot deals and then you're okay usually uh, see the uh, protocol is different for different condition particularly the person who is taking prp for arthritis like a knee arthritis so the purpose of prp is to delay the process of arthritis we cannot stop the arthritis with prp but definitely it delays the process of arthritis so in that type of case we usually prefer to give prp injection at every month for three injection and after that we repeat that injection at every one year to just right. keep maintenance dose but for tennis elbow for rotator cuff once the uh, rotator cuff healed it is like a permanent solution so right. after that there is no need of any injection right but if the uh, tear is little bit large in that type of case we need more uh, platelet for healing so in that type of case we can offer the patient to do uh, take this injection after one month maybe two or three injection is sufficient to uh, so, heal that process so careful monitoring is done definitely on, on all of it Definitely. no matter what yeah. so it could be a small one where hey you're fine in four weeks and mm. that's it we don't have to see you again mm -hmm. or it could be you have something a little bit more severe you may need one more treatment Definitely. and of course for uh, the arthritis because arthritis the, the deterioration mm -hmm. this would at least slow the deterioration from getting worse Definitely. and if not help with the mobility more with the patients right yeah definitely uh, this is the process uh, which delayed the arthritis so you may not have to land up with uh, replacement surgery early so what is the success rate of this prp okay that's a good question larry because uh, patient has a lot of interest in success rate you know and it's quite obvious because they don't have to bother about the procedures and how to how you do that procedure ultimately end result is uh, important for the patient so always patient ask about the success rate of this prp and it is variable in variable uh, hands of doctors variable techniques selection of the patients so there are so many factors affecting the success rate so if you uh, get the concentration of prp which is less than five times you won't get that result okay so the success rate you can say hardly 10 percent but if you can get 10 times concentration in your plasma then the success rate is good so the most important is the technique how you get that plasma concentration so there are varieties of kits available in the market the cheap uh, kits they provide this uh, uh, plasma uh, concentration plasma which has a very low concentration of platelet but the good quality of kit provide good concentration so if you use a good quality of kit for the spinning and uh, a centrifuge system so in that type of case you can get uh, good concentration of prp so one thing is that second thing is the selection of patient as i already told you if you have selected the wrong patient 
who has a very low platelet because of disease, because of medicine, right. you cannot get that result. Right. Third thing is the indication of your surgery. If it is a large tear, if it is a complete tear, in that type of case, even if you put PRP injection, you won't get that result. Right. Okay. But if you have a good technique, if you have a good patient, and if you have a good indication, I would say you will get 70 to 80 percent chances of recovery and chances of healing by this process. And that is the reason why uh, this uh, injection th and this treatment is become more and more popular. Now, let's get to the meat potatoes. What are the complications from there? Are there any complications from yeah. the PRP? So uh, the good thing of this PRP injection is that it's totally patient's own uh, like a uh, product. So there is, uh, I would say, very minimum reaction chances of uh, uh, like anti allergic reactions. The only complication is that patient develops some soreness at the site of injection right. and some inflammation. Very rarely you can get some infection uh, right. at the site of injection. So this is the only complication you can face with it, this Like injection. we have said before, this is the body healing the body. Mm -hmm. This is using your own parts of your body to heal yes. other parts mm -hmm. of your body. That's true. Now, uh, another question is, um, is this FDA approved? That is, uh, uh, honestly speaking, it is not FDA approved right now because of multiple reasons. Because FDA want a big study, comparative study of uh, this treatment, but there is not a specific kits uh, people are using to perform this PRP. Someone are using some labs, lab, um, like a poor quality uh, kits, some are using good quality uh, kits. So the result is not consistent and because of that FDA uh, still not approve this procedure and uh, uh, we need to uh, use a good quality of kit to get approval of FDA. And not just that, but because the FDA is food and drug, there's no drug involved here. Yeah, this definitely. Is, this is body this to is body. body so, yeah, so uh, you know, it's, it's not approved but it's not told not you yeah, know, don't it, do it, it either. Yeah, definitely. So because it is, it is not like uh, some other medicine where we need to uh, like uh, which affect the patient's body part, which uh, gives some reaction. So we are quite hopeful to get approval uh, by FDA. Uh, so finger crossed, we can get this approval early. Right, and you know because they consider this experimental, but they they consider MRIs experimental that would have been done for fifty years. <laughs> okay, um, your insurance company may not cover this. Yeah. So, but the cost is not astronomical either, right? I know. So the same way because it is not consistent, uh, like uh, documentation, consistent results are there with PRP, and that is the reason that uh, insurance company also denied for. Uh, paying cost for this P uh, PRP. So, still now, uh, not a single insurance company is paying for this uh, PRP injection. But uh, uh, if we go with a good result, if we show good uh, uh, like static uh, documents, then definitely we can get that approval in future. Now, how much is, would it usually cost, you know, just ballpark it for uh, some people? Yeah, because patient has to pay from his pocket. Right. And, uh, one injection roughly says around 800 to 1000 dollar cost to the patients and it's depend upon the kit which you use if you use a good quality kit you have to pay something more but i would say that uh, just to save a couple of dollars you should not select a wrong kit or some some cheap options right. because this is totally depend upon how much concentration you are getting uh, in your plasma because now if, uh, like you're saying, if, if you're gonna go, go all the way. <laughs> Not, I know. You know, don't, don't, it's your health. You don't want to cut corners on your health. I know, you know? definitely. And, uh, you know, because of the insurance companies, like I said, I think everybody who watches this show and everybody has to know that you're denied something. Always but by insurance companies, they, they have know. no, you know, they, but let's I say no first <laughs> and then we'll worry about it later, I you know? know? But uh, I would say that uh, instead of spending too much money for surgery, in the future, if you can prevent that condition by spending some uh, amount of money, uh, some amount of dollar, so I would say that it's a great idea to land up with some surgery. If you have a small tear in the rotator cuff and if you don't take care of the things, it may land up with a complete tear and then you have to go for a surgery. 
So, I would say that uh, taking a chance to heal that uh, tissue is a good idea rather than to land up with some uh, surgical intervention. Right. Well, we're almost out of time. Just one last question is that what can other people do to prevent themselves from getting into these problems? I know. So, it, it's a, uh, uh, I would say that the prevention is better than the, uh, the cure. cure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm happy if the patient can take care of three golden rules uh, in their life, they won't get this type of injury very commonly. One is a good habit, second is good food, and third is good exercise. Okay, right. so all these three things is too much important to get away from all these type of injuries, to get early arthritis. So if you say like a good habit, you have to develop good uh, sitting habits, sleeping habits, right. uh, lifting weight, then working habits. So that will help you to protect your muscles unwanted wear and tear. Second thing is good food, as you know that like uh, some uh, salads and uh, fruits and antioxidants, they are helpful for the uh, healing of our body tissues. Right. And the third thing is exercise. Everybody has to do some amount of exercise in the form of like gym or some cycling or some uh, sports activity, at least 30 to 40 minutes in a day that will really help them to keep away from these things. Right. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, this all things uh, make sense in your future life to prevent all these complications and uh, to see your doctors. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. We're out of time right now, but we'd love to bring you back in the future. Thank Maybe you so answer much. some more questions about PRP. And thank you so uh, during much. During the winter you. time, you know, there's a lot more damage done with shoveling driveways and slippery roads and everything else like that. I know. Yes. So until next time, I'm Larry Mike Rinder for Profiles. Take mm -hmm. care, stay healthy, and see you soon. Stay healthy. Thank you.